You may be seated. God bless you. God, I believe from the morning, the Lord gave me this. Ask me to tell you that you are special. Please tell somebody you are special. I didn't hear what you said. Now, I want you to turn with me to the book of Psalm of David, chapter 8, verse 3 to 9. Hallelujah. Verse 3 to 9. When I consider thy heavens, that means it's not one, the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, who thou hast ordained, he asked a question. What is a man that thou art mindful of him? Please, when we talk about somebody that is you are mindful of something, what do we mean? Ah, uh, no, 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 yeah, I want to, uh, 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 I want to, the description of mindful. Now, how many of you are aware, when you are mindful, at times you may not see clearly? You don't believe me? When you are mindful, I hope you know. When something has eaten deep into you, you can overstep. Is that true? Because you are consumed with the thought. You are not aware of your environment even when you behave. Because something has been enthroned in your mind. It's deep-seated in your mind. And God said, uh, the, 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 the angel spoke and said, God, what is a man that thou art mindful of him? Why? He's always in your mind. And the son of man that thou visitest him. Why do you visit him? Why do you care? You leave your throne, you come down to where he is in the garden of Eden. Why are you visiting him? Praise the Lord. Why are you visiting him? What's the problem? You are so mindful of him. The next place, fast. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angel. That place, angel, means Elohim. That word stands for Elohim in the Greek world. I mean, in the Hebrew world. And Elohim, he said, is a little lower than God. That is what it means. And has crowned him with glory and honor. Has crowned him with what? Glory and honor. For thou hast made him, thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oaks, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea. And whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Now, what you cherish occupies your mind. What you love, deep love, affects your heart. He said, what is a man that thou art mindful of him? Now, this statement was not referred to angels. This statement was not referred to any other thing God created, but was referred to man. Luke chapter 2, verse 7. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, 
Therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. Praise God. You are of more value than many what? Sparrows. Please tell somebody I am very special. Please, I want you to put this in your spirit. Don't just say it. Say it and mean it in your heart. You are very special to God. Hallelujah. Now, I want to ask you. How many of you have heard about kidnappers? You've heard about kidnappers. Have you? Let me see your hand up if you have heard about kidnappers. Praise God. How many of you are aware? The amount kidnappers ask for as a ransom is proportionate with how important their victim is considered. Is that true? They catch you. You are a granite seller and we say market. God damn it, what a bad market. How we, it's okay. Let them come and bail her. Pay ransom of 500,000. Because even if they ask for one million or two, they wasted their time. It's just a granite seller. So let's make the family run around, gather money so that they'll be able to pay. But if they catch you, you are a general, a CEO of a company. What happened? They said, until they bring 100 million, he's going to be here with us and we're going to kill him under three days. Why? Because they have weighed you, they have considered you, your level, what would have been in your account, the people that know you, how important you are in the society, you are within the government, the corridor of government, and now they have prized you and considered you important. And because of that, your price cannot be compared with the man who is a power tapper. It's not possible. Why? Because you have been considered as an important personality. Praise God. Now, I want you to follow me gently. Now, do you know that God, the one that sent his son, you were not in his good book. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of who? Of God. Please talk to me. Are you alive? Otherwise I make you stand up. You preach together with me. All have sinned and fallen short of what? The glory of God. Somebody say they are sinners. I say they are sinners. Hallelujah. But God, why are you still care, caring about these people? They willingly, they left you. John chapter 8. Verse 44 to 45. You are of your father the devil. That means the people belongs to the devil. The devil is their father. Listen, listen. Understand the story. These people became the, they willingly give the devil, say, be our father. That means they rejected God. Do you understand the whole thing? They rejected him. And he said, the lost of your father, you will do. 
For he was a murderer. God was telling them the devil is their father. By reason of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Is that not true? And he said, he was a murderer from the beginning. And I bought not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You see how God described the whole thing. Are you with me now? Now look at 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Hallelujah. Now, the people, the devil was their God. Somebody still was their God. But you know what? If I were to be the one, what didn't concern me, all of you perish. But because we are special to him, let's see what happened. Because of his attachment to us, we were rebellious. In spite that he planted a garden for us, he did everything, we were rebellious. We insulted him. We disobeyed him willingly and gave up and said, devil, come and be our God. Please tell somebody God loves you. Isaiah 49, 15 to 16. Can a woman forget her socket child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Did you hear that? Verse 16. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Uh, now, please, I, I want you to get this point clear. I'm trying to bring to your understanding the unshakable love that God has for you and me. And to show you how special you are in the sight of the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, even the mother giving suck to the baby. I forget. He said, I, your heavenly father, will not forget. You messed up big time. But he said, I will not forget. Because you are special to me. Matthew chapter 10 verse 30. Matthew. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. You see how careful God is? He did not only engrave you into his palm, the hair. What does that mean? When one drops while you are combing, it has a, a, a combing it, he is aware of the particular strand that dropped. God is aware whether it's number 16 that dropped while you were combing or number 32. That is how careful and delicate you are. In the sight of God. He observes every moment, every second. He wants to make sure he knows everything about you. Please open your heart and receive this word. Lift up your right hand. Say, Father, open me to this teaching. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Even the strand that drops, he knows which one dropped out of you. So God is never careless about you. So when I see people, they do some certain things in their rooms, in their bedroom. They gossip, they carry. I say, but are you not aware he's aware of these things? 
There is no way you can hide it from me. You are alone in the car. He knows what you are doing. You are alone in the market. He knows where you enter. Listen. When you see someone committing sin, it's blind. You didn't hear what I said. I said when you see someone committing sin, it's blind. You know why? If the truth have been unveiled, if the truth is, if it's aware of the truth, there is no way. If the consequences, you see, you just know, so, so the sinner that shall die, it, honey, it's more than that. When you understand the consequences of those actions, nobody will ask you. Don't ever imagine about it. Knowledge has been our problem. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Hallelujah. Are you there? Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The, you, 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 you see the commitment of God to man. The commitment, he said, I will never leave thee, neither will I forsake thee. Look at the Hebrew. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. Three, verse 16 to 21. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Yes. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye be rooted and grounded in love. Listen to that scripture. May be able to comprehend with all sense what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. The love he has for you passeth knowledge Passed all understanding is so deep that no knowledge can comprehend it. Please, am I talking? Hallelujah. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Listen. The love of God for you, there is no knowledge that can quantify it. That knowledge has not been born. Praise God. So listen, if, if I know that you love me, my approach to you will be different. When I'm asking you something, I know you love me. You won't deny me. You can only deny me what you know will endanger my life. Is that true? But what will not endanger my life, you will see to it that I have it. Praise God. Please, you are the beloved of God. You cannot ask for something and God will turn it down. Praise God. When you are qualified for what you are asking for. He will never. Why? Because he loves you that he can't deny you any good thing. If you are his, that must be established first. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at verse 21. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Throughout all ages, world without end. Praise God. Now, I want you to understand we are going somewhere. God is sovereign. Tell your neighbor, God is sovereign. Say like you mean it. Psalm 115 verse 3. But our God is in the heavens. He had done what savor he had pleased. Somebody say God is sovereign. 
He had done whatsoever he had pleased. That is to say, no one can direct him and say, don't do this for Mrs. Iremolo. Don't do, no matter how you hate her, you cannot determine or instruct God of what to do for her. God is sovereign. No witch can make God turn against you for any reason. But our God is in the heavens. And what did he say? He had done what saved he had pleased. If it pleased him, if it had pleased him, this is what I'm going to do. I said, God, don't do it. He said, I'm sovereign. No one has given to him that will come back and say, pay me back what you gave me. But the cattle on the thousand, he belongs to him. The devil himself was created by him. He is sovereign. He is just a great father who works by his own principle. You can't determine for him. He's the boss of the whole earth. And the devil knows that. Praise God. Amen. Look at what Daniel said, chapter 4, verse 34 to 35. And at the end of the day, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven. And my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed him most high. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. He doeth according to his will. Not anyone bribing him to do this or do that. Listen, even if I hate you, God can never hate you. That I hate you does not mean that God will change in the promise he has made upon your life. It's a sovereign God. You can't move God against anybody. Please understand that. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Now, when God wanted to snatch us from the hands of the devil, he needed to provide a ransom. When God wanted to snatch man out of the hand of the devil, God, why are you concerned about man? Is special to me. And now, God wants to snatch man out of the hand of the devil. And now, to do it, he has to pay ransom. He has to pay ransom. Part of the strategy, the devil was so mad that man is the next to God. And he became jealous to create friction between man and God. And now it has already happened. Right from the Garden of Eden, God started a program on how to ransom man. The first thing he did was to slaughter an animal and cover them. It was not a remission, it was a covering. Praise God. They were covered. But now, the key was not taken back. The enthronement was not taken back. But just to cover until the actual thing becomes. Now, they have to go in search of what will be qualified to redeem man, to ransom, the ransom that will be acceptable. They now started from the heavens. They went throughout the heaven. They could not find any qualified person 
that could be the ransom with which to redeem mankind. One angel killed 185,000 people. That, that, that one is not even an archangel. Are you hearing me? Yet, none of them, billions of angels, no one was qualified to stand in that position. And they came to the earth to search, to see if they could find who will be qualified for this assignment. They went through the earth. No one was qualified. They went to underneath the earth in search of who will qualify. Listen, in heaven, on earth, underneath the earth, no one was qualified for the ransom. No one. No one. You need to understand why the man called John cried when he was caught into the third heaven to see the 24 elders and the throne of God. Why he shed tears. Because the announcement was made that in the heaven, on earth, and on the day, no one was qualified. That we ran some man. The seven keys, the keys were locked. Man was destined by his action to die. Man was destined to slavery. Man was destined to die by cancer. Was destined to die by poverty. No one was qualified. God said, hey, Hey. No one was qualified. None. My goodness. And these people are special to me. What do I do? He sees you as special. But he sent his only begotten son. His own world. To redeem you and me. The fact that he sent his son to die so that you may have life. God said it's okay. No one in heaven on earth underneath. And they had a meeting. And when they had a meeting, he said, Dad, I'll go. I made them. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Nothing you see that was made, that was made, but all was made by him. And the Bible says that in the beginning of his journey, God possessed him. God could not go without him. Praise God. He said, Dad, I go. He says, son, listen to me. I hope you know the consequences of your action because I'm a God of principle. You are going to pay a price that no man has ever paid. Not only that, you are not going to jump down from heaven, but you are going to enter the womb of a woman and you are going to be like a piece of dust like them. I want you to understand the consequences. You know how insulting it is for you to say Mary was carrying Jesus. But reverse is the case. Jesus was carrying Mary. Do you know what it is for somebody to say that is the mother of Jesus? He took it. He came like a piece of dust. Like you are, and like I am, on the earth. He walked on this dirty, rough road with us. The one who sits in heaven. And the angels cry, holy, holy, holy. 
He left his throne. He came down. I want you to appreciate how special you are and the price he paid for your sin. He left the throne. He came down and listened. The Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not. None received him. They said to him, deceiver. They call him all sorts of names. But you know what? Glue his eyes to his purpose. It's my prayer that you will not allow anything to distract you from the purpose for which you were created. He glued his eyes to his purpose. At a time he said to them, I have a baptism to be baptized to it. But I wish, how I wish it's already done. Huh? They could not comprehend what he was saying. He said, I came to lay my life. No man take it from me. I chose to lay it down and let her take it again. No man is taking it away from me. He said to them, I and my father are one. Have you seen me? You are asking of the father. Hallelujah. The reason you went through that process was because you are so precious. He was aware of the pain and the anguish. He was aware of the disdain that we follow it. But all meant nothing to him because of how special you are to him. And the Bible says, if God that gave out only thing he has, what is that thing that he will deny you? For, the God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not that he has them two. They are not three. Only one. And that one is to be killed. Because they are special that I should pay this price for them. Because you are so special to him. Even when they messed up, he would have gone back to heaven. He kept quiet. He kept saying, I don't care what you have done, but my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. I pray that time shall come that many of us will become like him because we reason naturally and that is why we have a lot of problems. When men messed up, make mistakes around you, you withdraw what you used to do. I won't greet him again. He will die of hunger. I won't give it to him to eat again. You lie. You are not God. Even to the unjust, he giveth rain to the just and unjust. And he said we should be like our father who is in heaven. Praise God. And I ask you, are you like him? Hallelujah. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the word knoweth us not because he knew him not. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we 
should be called the sons. One more time. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. If the world do not know who you are, you should be able to know who you are. And until you know who you are, you will never manifest who you are. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. As I begin to round up. The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. He said, with everlasting love, not temporal. Not temporal. Hallelujah. In conclusion, First Peter. Chapter 1. Verse 18 to 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. And silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. We were not redeemed by silver, by gold. Goat, no animal, no cow. No. We were not redeemed by those things. Verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, that is how you were redeemed. No spot, no blemish. The son died. To show you and I how valuable we are to him. How precious. How special you are to him. What more would you want him to do? He said to you, what is that thing I cannot give you? What is that thing God cannot give you? Why must you look towards the occultism to a making gain from a wrong perspective, wrong areas when God so loved you? The only thing he had, he gave it out for your sake. And the son went through a terrible process. The highest you can live here is 120. Does it worth it? You are special to God. That is why the Bible enjoins you to love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. Because God loved you without restraining anything from you. And when he found a man like that, like he found Abraham, heaven shakes. May you so love God that the actions of men will not affect your relationship with God. For any reason. May you so love God. That you don't allow culture. To mix up. With your relationship with God. May you so love God. That you can forgive. Very quickly. May you so love God. That there is nothing. You cannot release to God. May you so love God. That you become addicted. To the house of God. I want you to bow your head and ask yourself what did I do to merit such special position that love what did I do that the son of God the only son not two was released to take my position. 
I've paid a debt that I could not pay. And translated me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And said to me, occupy till I come. And said to me, you now tread upon salmon and scorpion. What's supposed to kill me? I walk on top of their heads. He enthroned me above them. And made me the head and not the tail. That God is my God. I am special. I'm not an ordinary. Because I'm special, heavy payment was made on my head. And he said, ask anything you want because you are special to me. I will give it to you. Can we stand up? Lift up your hand. Father, I release them into your hand. Lord, I pray that these ones, they will begin to study their word, the word of God. And they will begin to walk by the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Baba, while others are, are in pain of what to eat, no member of this church that is walking by the truth that comes from the altar that we lack good food. Amen. Like we lack any good thing. Amen. When others are looking for you shall be given out to. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed in Jesus name.